Hello, friends, and welcome to this another session on prescriptive analytics or data optimization. We have spent a significant amount of time understanding the various problems. And uh, today, the business problem that we're going to talk about is related to assignments. Transportation problems, then you have assignment problems and a bunch of other problems. Let's see how many we can cover. So we will talk about assignment problems, friends. But before we get into the assignment problems, I wish to briefly help you all understand what is this assignment problem all about, right? And um, I've also made a quick literature out so that I do not miss out on any, right? The transportation problems that we have spoken about were related to supply points and then you had certain demand points and you had to supply to your destination typically. If the number of supply points is equal to number of destination points, it's called as balanced. Otherwise, it is imbalanced or unbalanced. And we need to add either a dummy supply or a dummy destination to balance the problem. When it comes to assignment problems, you will have people, right? You'll have different people. So person one, person two, person three, person four in that way. And you'll have to assign them certain jobs. Let me call it as job one, job two, job three, and job four. Let's first talk about a scenario where the number of people are equivalent to number of jobs. In these kind of scenarios, the matrix that you're going to have would be a cost matrix. If you have four people, person one, person two, person three, and person four, and if you have four jobs, job one, job two, job three, and job four, and if you know, <clears throat> What is the cost of person one completing job one? What is the cost of person one completing job two? What is the cost of person one completing job three? So on and so forth, then job done. You can solve this. You also need the cost, uh, sorry, sorry, yeah, total cost. And also how much time each person takes to complete a specific job. Okay. Majorly here, your decision variable, decision variable would always be whether you need to assign a job to a specific person or not. If you're going to assign a specific job to a specific person, it'll be one. If you do not want to assign, it'll be zero. Okay, this is your decision variable. Then you also need your objective. Objective function here is to minimize the total cost. Total cost, meaning entire cost if you put together. Person one doing job one will take 10 hours and hourly cost for this person is say $10. So overall, it will be $100 in that way. So objective would be to minimize the cost into whether you have assigned the task or not. Only if you have assigned the task, XIJ will be one and there'll be a cost associated with that. Otherwise there won't be any cost. So this is how it works. And then you also have constraints. When it comes to <coughs> when it comes to constraints, there are two different sets of constraints. Each person should be assigned one job, and each job should be assigned only to one person. So how would you write it, right? So this is like you have your x one one. Okay, so I'll put it as x one one plus x12 plus x13 plus x14. 
x11, x12, x13, x14. If this person is mapped to all these jobs, and if you know for a fact that each person should be assigned to only one job, then the summation of this should be equivalent to one. This is one constraint. Okay. And the second thing is that x11 plus x21 plus x31 plus x41 because person 1 to job 1, person 2 to job 1, person 3 to job 1, person 4 to job 1. And you have a constraint that each job should be assigned to only one person. So the summation of this also should be equivalent to 1. Usually, <clears throat> this will be our objective function to minimize and this will be our decision variable. Should you assign a task or not? And you have the constraints. Okay. Given this, let's get into one such problems and we will solve it. Oops. Yeah, this one. Just give me a moment while I try to... Close... The other part, okay. So here, assume that <clears throat> you have four people and you have four tasks, data collection, descriptive statistics, predictive analytics, and MLOps. And you have the duration on how many hours each person is going to take to accomplish a specific task. And also you have their hourly billing. How much do you charge per hour? or to your, say, customer. If you are a performing organization, if you are a company such as Accenture, Deloitte, etc., if you do projects for various companies, for your human resources, you're going to charge some money to the client, right? So that's the hourly billing that you have. And here, you need to decide whether you want to assign a task to a specific person or not. Simple. Everything would be, I mean, I, I'll just remove these things here. Yeah? And now, we need to ensure that total number of, you know, tasks which are assigned to individuals is always equivalent to one. Okay, each individual should be assigned only one task. And every task should be assigned to only one person. So if this is a task, you need to assign it to only one person. So when you do a summation of all these things, it should be one, always. Okay, so that's how the constraints will be defined. So you're saying demand, always one. Supply, always one. Okay, this also I'll remove. So we want to minimize the total time. Total cost, I've just mentioned it like that because uh, you can always do this. You know, this multiplied by 14, sorry. Plus this multiplied by 14 plus this multiplied by again fourteen dollars plus number of hours multiplied by total billing plus you continue doing that this multiplied by this you keep doing that throughout you'll get some cost okay and uh, go to drag drag it it will it will get applied for all the columns. And then you can take a simple summation of that. Just in case you are interested to know the total cost <clears throat> is going to be so much. That aside, total time is what we are interested in. We want to minimize the total time taken. You know, This is just for your knowledge purpose that I've 
given it here. I can remove it if you feel that it might be confusing for you all. Mm -hmm. So let me just remove everything. Okay, done. Now let me go to data here. Uh, let me click on solver. Our optimization function is to minimize the time. Okay. What do we want to do? We want to minimize that by changing what? By changing these, whether you want to assign a task or not. I mean, everything can be zero initially, for instance. That's, that's absolutely fine. Then we need to add um, constraints, right? That all of these should be equivalent to exactly one. <clears throat> Another constraint is total assignments should be equivalent to exactly one. Job done. So we have two constraints. And you say unconstrained should be, um, I mean, whatever are the unconstrained variables, make it non-negative. Because whether you're going to assign a task or not is what uh, you want to fill here. Okay, now if I were to click on solve. Mm -mm. Good. It is telling us that boss, first of all, just, uh, you know, put the values here. Right. So <clears throat> number of hours task will take multiplied by whether you are assigning the task or not. First of all, you need to have that. Yeah. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll put all zeros just to get started. Now let's solve it. Everything is in place, I believe. Let me solve it. Okay. There we go. Overall, it is going to take 147 hours. They would be assigned predictive analytics. Srikanth would be assigned descriptive analytics. Sampath would be assigned ML ops. And Sharath would be assigned data collection tasks. Okay. <coughs> When you do that, you're going to accomplish the task in the minimum amount of time possible, given the constraints that every person is assigned only one task, and given the constraint that every task is assigned to only one person. But this was a balanced scenario. Next, let's look into imbalanced scenario as well. <clears throat> 